Hello students, welcome to the class of your botany today. Today we will be dealing with a uh, living world as you can see, okay. In the last previous videos we have already done a taxonomy in detail, okay, along with the history of taxonomy. If you want to know more about it, you can go back, google it up and you can find it on the website, okay guys. One more thing before I start with the lecture, guys when we talk about your living world, this is the chapter during any of the preparation of your competitive examination. What you tend to do, you just give a quick review, in fact you miss many valuable points. That is the reason this video is very important for you so that it will help you in order to give you a quick review notes, okay. So moving ahead, living world as we have already done taxonomy in the previous video, today we will be doing living world in two fractions. We will be doing normal taxonomy along with the nomenclature, classification and then we will be taking care of taxonomical aid which is very very important. What happens when you look into your NCRT or any of the book or module what you tend to do is like you just skip this topic but this topic is of utmost important. Okay, so moving ahead let us talk about your taxonomy. So when we are dealing with taxonomy, uh, we will be first dealing with certain subtopics. The first is an identification, okay. Agreed that yes, the first, uh, I would say the first uh, nomenclature base or the first identification criteria was given by Aristotle. Then it was simultaneously given by Carlos Linnaeus. So Carlos Linnaeus was the person who actually gave this term which we know, now we know is binomial nomenclature okay. Binomial nomenclature on a very specific graph that we know it deals with genus and species okay. This is what we used to know genus and species. Now the word genus has been changed to generic name and species now what we call it as specific epithet. This is just in general information later on during the class we will be doing this one in detail. So binomial nomenclature G comprises of your genus and species and then we have your taxonomic categories which we will be dealing on okay. Now first just a quick information, identification, say for example you find an organism, you find a structure, an organism, so on what basis you will distinguish them. So you will be distinguishing them might be on the basis of embryological evidences, on the basis of number of carpels, petals, on the basis of I would say notochord present or not whether it is a flowering plant or non-flowering plant, whether it belongs to a wheat family, it belongs to your potato family, these are the general criteria on these basis you just identify them simultaneously, okay. That is the reason there is a word or there is a term which is known as taxon or you say it taxa. flower, non-flowering, flowering, seed, seedless, uh, dicotyledon, monocotyledon, these are all taxonomical identification criteria, okay. But yes, taxonomical categories have been designed on the basis of some physiological, embryological evidences that we have already studied in taxonomy, okay. So now moving ahead. Let me talk more about the branches. So the branches that it deals with animals and your plants, animals and your plants. So they are, these branches are actually I, C, Z, N, I, C, B, N. Let me write down full form for you, okay, which is very important.
international code of zoological nomenclature zoo means animals zoological nomenclature same thing international code for botanical nomenclature botanical plants okay so these are the two branches who majorly deal with zoology as well as your zoology i would say animals as well as plants okay so now we will be moving ahead and talking about taxonomic categories so when we are talking about taxonomic categories let me write it down for you here there is a way or a simplified form in order to identify. So, let us see what are these taxonomic categories which was which is also known as linear hierarchy as usual yes it is given by Carlos Linnaeus. Let us see what is this linear hierarchy ok. Let us start the highest point is your kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, generic name or you can say genus and finally species or specific epithet. Remember I just told you about that? Agreed we know about this but there should be a way so that we do not you know jumble it up. So, in order to understand it more I would say more nicely or you would say more at an ease what you can do you can learn a rhyme with it. Keep pot clean or family gets as simple as that. Keep pot clean or family gets sick. Of course, you have to keep the pot clean otherwise family gets sick. So, the best thing kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, specific epithet. Okay. So, hopefully it makes it easier for you to learn kingdom being the highest in the hierarchy and the specific epithet being the being the smallest one. Okay. Agreed. We know about this. There is no problem in understanding linear hierarchy. But what is the major important thing whenever you are writing down any binomial nomenclature what need to be understood carefully is the certain rules and regulations. Okay. So, that is what we are going to discuss now. What are the rules or the criteria which need to be followed while writing down binomial nomenclature? Okay. So, let us pay attention. Let us talk about your first one. Whenever anybody is writing down binomial nomenclature, binomial nomenclature you can say a scientific notation. First of all, why it is required? Why is it required a binomial nomenclature? I will give you a very, very simple example. Say for example, there are three set of scientists or you can say three scientists are there. Okay? Each of them is working on brinjal. Each of them is working on brinjal. Say for example, in my native language, uh, say for example in India brinjal is brinjal agreed and in other places brinjal might be known as eggplant 
okay? And it might have a different name or bujin. So if they are sitting together, if anybody asks in the panel that on what section or what vegetable or what organism you are working on, the person would say, I'm working on orbigin. I'm working on brinjal. I'm working on eggplant. But what is the common thing? The common is that they all are working on the same thing. So to cut out the confusion, what has been derived, they have been given a scientific name so that everybody can acknowledge, yes, we are working on the same plant. That is the reason the eggplant or the orbigine or brinjal, categorically together, they are actually known as your solenum melangina. I'll write it down later on for you. So just a general information that why binomial nomenclature is very much needed so that there should not be any confusion. Okay. Now let's move to the rules and regulations of your binomial nomenclature. So the first rule that needs to be followed is yes, it is Latin. Yes, it is Latin and need to be written in italics. And need to be written in italics because if it is written in italics, that says yes, its origin is Latin. Okay. Second one. Whenever we are writing down binomial nomenclature, if written, then genus and specific epithet need to be underlined separately and when typed then they need to be, of course, need to be in italics. Okay? I will be giving you certain examples along with this. Let's first narrow down the rules. The third one. The first name written is of genus followed by specific epithet. Okay guys? And the fourth one, the first letter is in capital followed by small letter or notation or an alphabet, small letter when we talk about your specific epithet. Let me give you certain examples. When I say that it should be written in italics, of course, it should be written in italics. So what happens is that whenever you, re you are reading any NCRT or any of your refreshers or any book or anything, when you see something written in italics, that means a binomial nomenclature has been given to you. A scientific name has been given to you. Okay? Let me take one very good example. Everybody knows Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. If written, then genus and specific epithet, first of all, this one is your genus and this one is your specific epithet. Specific epithet. They need to be underlined separately if I'm writing down. So what I'm going to do, I need to underline it separately like this. 
okay. And yes, the first letter, the first name, it's of course I've written here genus and specific epithet. The first letter is in capital followed by small letter. That means capital letter, small letter. Okay, let's have a quick revision. First of all, a binomial nomenclature consists of your genus and specific epithet. If you are writing it down, then they need to be underlined separately. Like in this case, genus, the first notation, the first letter would be capital, species or specific epithet. First letter would be a letter on an alphabet, I would say. An alphabet would be small in letter, okay. These are the criteria that one need to follow in order to give information or in order to read about, in order to explain about binomial nomenclature, okay. So, moving ahead, when we are now talking about binomial nomenclature, let us talk more in detail about taxonomic categories. So, if somebody asks that how many taxonomic categories are there, we just did it. Remember, keep pot clean, keep pot clean or family gets sick, okay. So, you need to learn all of them. So, let us do it in a very simplified form. Let us first talk about species or specific epithet. Specific epithet will have the maximum similarities. It will show maximum similarities. It will show maximum similarities, okay. Then it is being followed by genus. Of course, a set of, I would say, um, organization of specific epithet. Specific epithet will give the information in order to understand genus. So, it is a cumulative effect. That means, on the basis of specific epithet, we will be able to identify or we will be able to get genus, okay. I will give you a certain example here, so that there should not be any confusion. Say for example, there is Panthera tigris. Panthera tigris, genus, species. Panthera leo. Same genus, but different species. Panthera tigris is of course your tiger. Panthera leo is your lion. Okay guys, so let us do more about it. Specific epithet genus. Hmm. Let us talk about now family. Similar. All the information which has been uh, accumulated in your genus, that information, a set of related, a set of related specific epithet will give you genus, a set of related genus will give you family, a set of related epithet, specific epithet will give you genus, a set of related genus will give you family, okay. Let us take some more example here. So, if I talk about, just let us take this example. I am talking about Panthera tigris, Panthera leo, okay. So, what family they are in? They actually are in a family which is known as Felidae family. Felidae family, okay. Felidae family means it includes cats, lion, tiger, it has been included into a family club together. Simultaneously, there is one more family which is known as Canidae family. 
Canidae family, as the name suggests, Canidae are the dogs one, dogs family. So in order to explain you further, I'll give you a few more examples of Canidae. Canis familiaris and Canis lupus. When we talk about your Canis familiaris, these are the wonderful things, these are actually dogs. Canis lupus, these are actually wolves. Okay, again, specific epithet, of course, maximum similarities, which is also known as species. Accumulative information of specific epithet will make genus, and the cumulative information of genus will give you family. Say, for example, I know Panthera tigris, Panthera leo, okay. I know that Felis, I will write down the name of cat as well so that it becomes easy for you, okay. Let me write down the cat here because I am including cat also here in the, this family. So let me write down the name of the cat here. Felis domesticus. This is actually the scientific name of cat. Okay, guys, hopefully you have been able to understand so far. Canidae family, a dog family that you say, in which uh, different breeds or different, you, can you see different species are included. Canis is the similar one. Genus is the same, only the species varies. So they club together, they will come into one family, Canidae family. Felidae family is your cat family. So these all will make a cat family and these two will make a, a dog family. Okay. So now let us move ahead further. As we are discussing about taxonomic categories here. So now let us talk about the order. Let me write it down for you. Order, class and then phyla. Hmm. Let us talk about your order. Okay. So far, what we have been dealing with is your cat family, your dog family, okay. So, these are the families that we are dealing with. So, your Felidae plus your Canidae, they will be, they will be categorized on the basis of similarities, on the basis of similarities. They might be on the basis of different similarities uh, or you will say dissimilarities as well. Dissimilarities means of course they will be opt out from that option, okay. So simple one on the basis of similarities. Felidae and Canidae, they both are carnivores, right? Flesh eating, meat lovers, flesh eating. So they belong to order carni. Vora. Simultaneously, if I take this one, they are carnivores, class. Let me take carnivores plus primates or you can say primata, Carn because it will be easy for you to understand. Carnivora plus primata, they can be clubbed together again on the basis of similarities under class. Mammalia. Remember, primata are those ones your uh, gorilla, gibbon, gorilla, gibbon. Okay, and yes, phylum. This is very important, guys. I'm going to use this pen in order to make you understand. When we talk about your phylum, okay, phylum is the one which basically uh, divides on the basis of you can say um, notochord, notochord, flowering, non flowering, and many more major similarities. But 
lesser in number. So, the maximum similarity is what we found was in species and the minimum similarity criteria comes down to the phylum. Okay. So, as we are discussing mammalia, okay. so mammalia of course, mammalia they will be included where? When we are talking about carni, just a quick review, Pelidae, Canidae will give you carnivora, carnivora plus primata they will be included, mammalia and yes when we talk about your phylum, remember phylum on the basis of notochord, backbone, they will be categorized as chordata, chordata, okay and about these ones you will later on learn in your animal kingdom. And yes, last but not the least, we have your kingdom, the largest hierarchy and yes, kingdom will be animalia, kingdom will be animalia. Guys, when we are talking about your phylum, phylum is the broader term that we use in case of your animal kingdom. But when it comes to your plant kingdom, the phylum can be notified as or the phylum can be known as division. Phylum name has been given when it comes to use basically majorly your animal and when it comes to your uh, plants, we talk about the division instead of phylum we talk about division. So, these are the taxonomical categories which you have to understand it very nicely and very precisely. Hopefully, you have been able to understand this one. So, it will help you to narrow it down. Okay. So, in order to sum up what we have done so far, I will give you one slide here so that it becomes easy for you to understand this. This is the taxonomical category which is very, very important, which is very important because it will help you in all the competitive examinations, especially needs along with your uh, preparation of your school or boards examination. Okay. So, let us talk about wheat, mango, house fly. Okay. Remember, a I just want you to pay, this is what you need to see, I want you to pay attention to the phylum one. If I say phylum, can you see how broadly they have been identified? Angiospermae, angiospermae, arthropoda of course, this is animalia, so it is altogether different. Class on the basis of cotyledons, single covering, double covering, monocotyledon, dicotyledon. Let us first talk about your wheat, plantae. Angiospermae, monocotyledon, po in order to learn poels, sapindales, poels, the, the sound s especially for the order and yes when there is a family C E A E, poesi, enacardiaceae and yes the scientific name atritica mestivum, mangifera, indica. Okay guys, so just in order to help you further, this is your wheat, mango and your Housefly. Housefly, of course, being your Musca domestica. So, there is one more thing that I want you guys to know. I will just rub this one, which is also very equally important. Humans, how can we forget about humans? We will start with the maximum similarity base that is your species or specific epithet. Humans, Homo sapiens, capital H, small s, Homo sapiens. Okay, Homo sapiens, of course, the family Muscidae, similarly, there will be Homini. Day. Order. Remember, I just mentioned it there. Primata. 
class we already did mammalia phylum of course we are chordates and kingdom of course animalia so guys hopefully this video has been really helpful for you in order to understand memorize few of the basic points first of all just a quick revision you need to understand the basic rules and yes different examples different names binomial nomenclature you need to learn them okay so in the next video in the uh, we will be dealing with taxonomical aid which is which is also very important okay and regarding this if you have any doubts or any questions you can pull up in the websites you can write it down and we will be really glad to help you with this thank you guys